Travis Barron and Lauren Cruzy. For the second week in a row, Lauren Cruzy, fast time of the night with that little Nova. I mean, here's a guy that in qualifying, the setup on that race car is, I mean, it's working. It's working. He and he did it on the last lap. His last qualifying lap was his fast time, and he and this guy that is just said, you know what? I, I've taken this racing thing serious. I'm not gonna let it become a second job. You know, he's got a wife. He's got a he's got a full time job, and he's got responsibilities. He says this, we're just racing for fun. Right. If it becomes anything more than that, he goes, I'll park this car and and we'll go do other things. Yeah, know? because once it starts getting, once you start like. Uh, if running your life or right, or you right. know making an impression or if it if it starts taking away from the family and it's not fun anymore, right? That's when you need to start looking back at it and go, is this really something I want to do? Well, and that's how that's his approach yeah. this year. And since he's taken that approach, two weeks in a row, fast qualifier, he's right there with. I mean, he's right there with the best of the best in the class. Snake bit again. Um, no. Pull out. Yeah, he was up front. I mean, the car was moving. Andrew Langan. Uh, who won the feature two weeks ago, got the win over Shannon Horn by less, well, just over a half a second. I mean, these street stocks were right there with each other. I mean, it was bumper to bumper, door handle, I'm banging doors. I mean, it was Strawberry Cup racing, and it was it was awesome. It was hands down our best show of the year, and if we get anything better, I'll be surprised because it was it was hardcore dirt track See, that's racing. what – Here's the thing about – this: the biggest surprise of the night, and I got to give Chris Knobziger – all the respect and props in the world. Here's a guy that has the ability now. You look at where he, he, he look at his lineage. Claire Arnold, mm -hmm. the master. Nobody's ever prepped a track in our area better than Claire. And Claire can go out, and if he doesn't want a particular driver to win, he'll set that racetrack up so that driver doesn't win. Right. Right? So <clears throat> he passed that knowledge on to Bill Arnold, who then took everything – and put it on down to Chris, his son-in-law. Okay. Now, Chris <laughs> Chris fooled not only 109 drivers in the pits. He fooled every crew member. He fooled every staff member and every person in the fans that showed up at the racetrack in 100-degree weather expecting to see a dry, slick, strawberry cup racetrack. This track was as fast as fast gets given the temperatures that we were seeing, there was an upper groove, there was a mid, a bottom groove that that held moisture all day long. Okay. At the end of the feature, it was still a tack line all the way around the track. Hold and on, we're gonna talk on. about that because that came into play big time for some very big wins, and it started. Okay, it started in the street stocks. Now with the street stocks, we took. Uh, you're oh, you're telling me that there was with with a hundred degree heat, and you're in the Willamette Valley. Now, mind you, we have a little bit of moisture and stuff up there, but you had a hundred degree heat in all those cars, and you still had a tacky track. Yes, I'll I don't know give what it hand. I don't down know what or how Chris did it, but he did it. I mean, what? He, I went through the pit area, and you know how we do it. it, it We'll go two, three hours through the pit area talking to all these teams, and I'm not kidding you. Every single driver I talk to, yeah, we're going to put our dry slick set up on. We're going to make some adjustments to the chassis. We're going to move some bars. We're going to do this. We even had guys talking about changing gears simply because, you know, track conditions affects a lot. Absolutely. I mean, you would, you I would mean, think that it would be you – know, There I wasn't mean, one person at pit area that didn't expect – a dry slick. I mean, expected, always expected. Why, a dry why wouldn't you track. think that though? Right, right. Hundred degree weather for one thing. Chris is a magician. <laughs> he pulled it off. Gave these guys a track that was absolutely incredible. Um, Charlie Culpepper and Randy Jackson transferred out of the B into the A, and in the street stock. Oh, wait till you hear this. In the street stock feature, okay, we went twenty laps. No kidding. We went 20 laps, front row. Mikey Brake all started on the front row. <laughs> okay. I want you to pay attention to this because behind her was the fastest of the fast cars in this class. I mean, she had Langan right there. She had Chris Sign, Kevin Williamson, Irvine, Mark Gaylord. I mean, we're talking about some fast dudes right behind Alan her. Alan Roberts, top 10. Right behind her. And Mikey led that race. For the first 16 laps. 
Really? She led that race. She was side by Give side. Give it to these girls, Lap man. one. Lap one. She was side by side with the leaders. They went into turn one. And Mikey passed on the high side. Okay? I want you to understand this because that middle groove was real testy. There wasn't a lot of traction in that middle groove. The bottom was tacky. It was fast. The top was tacky and fast. She put that car in the middle groove into turn one, made a move on the high side to pass for the lead, got there and held it for 16 laps, and had we not had a caution with four laps ago, no I way. fully believe in my heart Mikey would have won that race. Ugh, now, what a bummer. That being said, those guys behind Mikey are very experienced drivers, and those drivers were Chris Sign, Andrew Langan, and Kevin Williamson. Okay? Williamson... We know how fast he is. Right. Langan already had a feature win coming into that show. And Chris Sign, the defending champion at Cottage Grove, who had like seven or eight wins down there last year, who has been so close to winning a feature at Willamette. Those three drivers in the late stages on the restart got by her. Chris Sign and Andrew Langan again for the second week in a row went at it like, I mean, just where well, they went to war. Chris Sign won the war, walked out with a Strawberry Cup trophy. Wow, congratulations to him. But, yeah. Mikey, I'll tell you what. You that, know, guys, these these girls are coming up, man. I mean, they are. They're no joke. They're, they're no, no joke. joke at all. I mean, they are some competition That's the real deal. all day long. I mean, they're a huge threat to be winning any of these heat races or mains or trophy dashes each and every week. Right. So I'm, it, so it, it, I'm so proud of those yeah. girls, man. Well, it's just it was really interesting. And, I mean, listen to the top ten right here. I mean, let's talk about it. Chris Sign, Andrew Lang, Kevin Williamson, Mikey Brakeball, Bill was Randy Jackson, JJ Irvine was right there in the hunt. He had Mark Gaylor, who kind of had some bad luck there in the late stages, you know, on the restart. Mm -hmm. He lost a couple spots. Ford Howe, which was a great run for the number 4D. I mean, he, he snuck in the top 10 and he finished eighth. Talon Roberts was ninth. And Evan Britton, who had a really good run going in the 85, kind of, in again, in the late stages, kind of slipped towards the middle pack. But it was. It was a fantastic feature, and these street socks, we've talked about it, you know, how what I feel about them. I think dollar for dollar as a race fan, it's hard to beat the value of the entertainment. Oh, absolutely. I, I agree 100% with you. And then we went into our sportsman division. Now, with the sportsman cars, we had two heat races and a feature. We had 16 sportsmen sign in. Our highest car count of the year for the sportsman. Um, in the two heat races, Eric Lindquist in the 333, you remember him? Mm -hmm. He picked up the win. And in heat race two, Mr. Tom Yak. Now, here's a car that uh, is on rails. It doesn't matter where he puts that car. He's always there is fast not, that car. I, I don't know if I've ever seen, and I've been at Willamette Speedway a long time, and I, I'm really having a hard time remembering a race car on slicks with that kind of forward bite on the exit. I mean, this guy is just, he's hands down, he, he's the guy to beat in this class. Now. That being said, Strawberry Cup, defending track champion, veteran driver Sandy Sanders shows up. Okay. His first run of 2016 brings out the defending championship car. And in the feature, Sandy and Tom had a race. They separated themselves from the field. They were battling. Uh, Sandy was right there with him. You know, it was, it was a knockdown drag out for the lead. Caution comes out. And unfortunately for Sandy Sanders, the car began to overheat, not wanting to risk his equipment. He pulls off the racetrack with about, um, I mean, Sandy pulled off the track, got lap 16. I think it was lap 16 with, uh, yeah, it was lap 16. Tom Yak walks out of... Uh, Willamette Speedway with a Strawberry Cup trophy. Now, it's cool to see Tom win this just because, you know, and we're not, we don't show, I mean, we truly don't show favoritism. and we're, we're fans in the booth. Right. And that's the thing is we are unbiased. We are unbiased. And I like seeing a little guy win if you want to call him the little guy, even though he's the guy to beat. You know, this is a converted modified. It's not a high dollar race car. Tom's one of those guys that's got it figured out. Now, this is the guy that started working at Willamette Speedway on the tow trucks. When he first started coming out, That's he, he started right. on the tow that. trucks. Yeah, you were there. You know, a guy got in a wreck, he'd go out and hook him up, take him back into the pit area. And, you know, I mean, that's where Tom started. From there, he went to the flag stand, 
Yeah, I, I remember. I remember when he did that. When yep. him and Bill were flagging yep. for all for those years, long and then time. he decided to get into racing and got him modified, and now he's the points leader in our sportsman class. He's a strawberry cup champion. I mean, that's pretty cool. All those years out at Willamette, and now he can say, "Hey, I'm a strawberry cup champion," and we know the names that have walked out of Willamette Speedway with strawberry cups. That, that is a good thing. Yeah, very cool. Super Sport Division. Give me, give me one second yeah, because they're saying that we have maybe a bad wire in one of our mics. Uh, Rick White saying that it's good, bad, good, bad, good, bad. So it says it's gone again. It might be our internet connection here too. So give us one second. Okay, pit stop. Let's see how that works out. So <laughs> see, if, uh, see if we're good now. Uh, see, Rick's got an earplug in one ear. Yeah, he he does. Yeah. So I mean, if it's not in stereo, then right. He can't hear yeah. us. And, <laughs> so. Stand with your good ear towards the speaker. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, we, we we do apologize again. You know, you guys. Um, we have uh, in the building the stuff that we're at. Uh, a lot of concrete, a lot of brick. There's a lot of concrete, a lot of brick, and we're we're um trying to do as you know the best we can. Uh, we show that we have strong uh, internet, but uh, but uh, but yeah. So let us let us know <laughs> better. Right. We we appreciate it. We're you know we're we're still trying. Um, we had lost uh, some communication. Uh, All right. So there we're they're saying we're good. Yeah. So. All right. Okay. So back super to sports. It. Super sports. Now this is a class that is just. I mean. Unbelievable. The sideboards and no tops, the old school racing rules. These guys are um we had a very, very good field of super sports, sixteen cars signed in. That's cool, um, man, for yeah, super sports it was, right there. Like I said, strawberry cup. You know, this is what happens. We see the car count. Now I don't know what's gonna happen this weekend because it's hard to back that up. hundred and nine mm -hmm. cars. I don't care what race it is, but strawberry cup is just one of those deals where it's hard to live up to. You know what I mean? Right. Uh super sports. Chris Mott. One heat race number one in a in a you know we had we had a deal where we had so many cars we kind of started a little bit late we were running a time limit but um you know it didn't come into it only came into play a couple heat races but Chris Mott picked up the win in heat race one and heat race number one he held off Jerry Casey we know the incredible car, uh, Hulk car it's right. fast I mean Jerry's fast in that class B J Hillier rookie driver oh actually it's B J Donofrio um, Robert Mercer Anthony Bentley came out representing the 41 that his dad wore for so many years. And then Clyde Rude. Uh, heat race two. Brian Brown, Dave Schmidt, Dan Dybel, Dave Foote, Dave Miller, Sean Cronk, and Brian Thompson. Pay attention to that finishing order, okay? Okay. We're going to talk about that. Heat race two. Brian Brown. Uh, we had four of the six cars on the lead lap. And then we had cars towards the lane that kind of... The ten car. You know, we know what he does with the winnings of that car. Right. One of the, the rehabs that can help out people. Uh, so remember that. Dave Thompson. Moving into heat race number three, James. Love that guy, man. That guy is so cool. That guy is so cool. Held off. Jeff Rash. Right. Larry Rodriguez, Barley, and Jordan Wright. Pretty fast field of cars right there. And that was a good win for James Slover in the 77. Now, in the future, okay, in the future, the distance, work, and Brian Thompson, Jordan Wright, and Ricardo Cross, both five drivers went to the front, got up to the front, and provided killer. Killer racing entertainment. <laughs> now you do, you do the you know the air quotes. Yeah, yeah, oh, I got yeah like yeah. I mean, I've got I'm, I'm I'm animated. So <laughs> the race of the nights, I'll tell you. The drive of the nights, I'll tell you right now. The drive of the night in this class went to Brian Thompson. Okay, Brian went through the field, got on the point, and checked out. There was I mean it was a one man gang up front. It was all Brian Thompson for the Strawberry Cup. himself so far from the field because Jordan Wright and Randy Barley 
Okay, those two drivers, those two drivers, and I'm not 